Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here walking with you in God's Word. We're in God's Word in Luke chapter 11, beginning at verse 29. We have a little short segment, but a pretty powerful segment. Um, in the fact that, uh, what do people look for? What do people look for in Jesus? What do people look for in the kingdom of God? Um, and when we have that view, we're really actually asking the wrong question, you know. Uh, being able to have what do people look for for Jesus? What do people look? They're going to look with their own bias. They're going to look for their own wants, their own what they would say are needs. But as we flip that question of being, so what does Jesus give in the kingdom of God? What does Jesus reveal to us in and amongst who He is and what He's going to do? And that's what we get to see in Luke chapter eleven. Um, as we get to see Luke chapter eleven verse twenty nine, uh, there was. A questioning of Jesus, as we talked about in this last video, uh, being able to say, is he of the demons? Is he of God? Um, Jesus squares that away. If I was of the demons, why would I be against the demons? Uh, if I was of Satan, why would it be against Satan? But rather, I'm going to point you in the way of what God has in mind. And he is more powerful, more powerful than anything of creation, including Satan, who is created, including uh, the demons who are created, including everything that you can see, feel, and touch, more powerful than. And so as he continues this rhetoric, as he goes forth, we listen to Jesus and to what he says about the kingdom of God, uh, what he says about the Son of Man. Um, and as he's connecting that from prophecy to fulfillment, from Daniel, prof prophet of Daniel, to who he is now and present as he's speaking to these people, um, we listen in to be able to grab what Jesus is speaking to us as well. So Luke chapter 11, verse 29. As the crowds increased, Jesus said, this is a wicked generation. It asks for a miraculous sign, but none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. This is what they're talking about before. Hey, uh, give us a sign. It says back in uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 16, others tested him by asking for a sign from heaven. We'll believe that he's not going to give them a sign. Every time they ask, um, a lot of the Jewish teachers and Pharisees and, and just people in the crowds, hey, give us a sign. <coughs> Excuse me. Give us a sign so that we will believe. And Jesus always negates that of being able to say, if I give you a sign, you'll believe in the sign. You'll believe in the miracle. You won't believe in the one who has done the sign, who has done the miracle, who has sent me. And so he refuses that. But he says, none, none will be given except the sign of Jonah. And so it goes back to the narrative of Jonah. And this is where something is, uh, especially, I want to bring this forth, uh, because many people, quite a few people, especially of scholarship, um, and aren't really of faith, they would say going back to Jonah is just this folklore. That Jonah in the Old Testament, since we don't really have the, the timing and the date of the official reality of, of Jonah's narrative, they would say it's just a folklore, especially a giant fish swallowing a person. The person doesn't die, but rather gets spewed up on land, um, then goes and turns the whole power of the empire of the Ninevites. Um, yeah, sounds a little, sorry for the pun, fishy to me. And so one of the things that is incredible in the gospel here is that Jesus makes mention of Jonah. It's not just a folklore. It's a narrative of actually a prophet. And in amongst his sign, none will be given except the sign of Jonah. And so he's connecting the Christ, the anointed one, the son of man, to the sign of Jonah, the reality of Jonah. And so it says this, for, in verse 34, as for as Jonah was assigned to the Ninevites, so also the Son of Man will be to this generation. What did Jonah do to the Ninevites? He came into that city, into that power, into that empire, and called them to repentance. As he didn't want to call them to repentance, he called them to repentance. But let's uncover this a little bit more, the sign of Jonah, right? As he runs from God, now the Son of Man is not going to run from God, but as he was in Sheol, as it says in the uh, Hebrew, into that dark pit of the fishes or on the um, uh, large creature's stomach, <laughs> as he was in there for how many days? 
three days. He was buried for three days, but then he came back to life as they would came. This, this is that fulfillment. The sign of Jonah is buried for three days, coming back to life. Yet, the Son of Man is also stepping into these people's lives and calling for repentance. For repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Verse 31 says, The queen of the south will rise at the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the ends of the earth to listen to Solomon's wisdom. And now one greater than Solomon is here. The queen of Sheba was even called to repentance and she believed. She was brought towards the word of God. And uh, that's why she's going to be standing in condemn of this generation. If she repented, why aren't you? Same thing as it continues to go forth. Something greater is than Solomon is here. Wisdom that Solomon have is actually the wisdom incarnate, the word of God incarnate, standing in front of you. Verse 32, the men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and now one greater than Jonah is here. One greater than Jonah, one more powerful than the Queen of Sheba, <laughs> the Queen of the South. Uh, one more greater than the prophets and the wisdom of what you've heard long ago. The prophets are fulfilled in Jesus. The wisdom is incarnate in Jesus. The Word of God became flesh and is standing in front of you, wicked generation. Repent. When he, when he says what he says, when he confronts you with what you need to be confronted with, when he actually delivers the message of God, listen to him. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent so that you can walk forth in forgiveness that he grants, that his healing is actually taking place, not for a sign, not for a miracle, so that you can see God at work. Brothers and sisters, in a generation, in a culture, in a society, in a world that is corrupt and chaotic and sinful, may we not put up a hand or walk away and be able to say that, hey, you know, we're doing pretty good. That might be the case, but we should listen to Jesus and being able to say, our eyes need to be fixed on him. And when we're, our, our eyes are fixed on him, he actually shows us the cross of forgiveness, but he also goes deeper than that, sends that spirit of repentance into us. So repent. Repent of our sins, knowing and unknowing, but being able to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus because he's always showing us, not a sign, not a miracle, but who God is and who we are, but what he has done for us. And within this gospel, as we listen to Jesus, we know he's the great one. He's greater than any part of creation. He's greater than anything that's gone before, and he's greater than anything that will ever come. We just keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and listen to him. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. Jesus is with you. And as he's with you, he wants you to live a life to the fullest rather than a life of sin. Have a blessed day as you repent. Have a blessed day as you listen to Jesus.